Matt from Mind Move Manifest here. And what does it mean to really lead? What does it mean to have somebody follow and guide them? That's a pretty deep question. And it's one that's worth answering because whether we know it or not, we're leaders in one way, shape, or form somewhere in our life. And it's how we take that responsibility on uh, and how we understand leadership that really makes the difference. What leadership is, is it's actually a transference of vibration. It's a transference of energy. And what I mean by that is, is you're taking your feeling. Remember, feeling is just a word we invented to describe the vibration we're in. And we're taking that feeling and being able to pass it on to another person. So first, in order for us to do that, we have to understand what that feeling is. We have to understand what that feeling is that we want for any particular situation that we're in, whether it be in our family, or our business, our community, any area that you find yourself leading, you have to understand and get clear what that feeling and what that vibration is for you. And when you're clear about what that is, you're able to transfer that to another person. The feeling of what it is that you're accomplishing. We're all headed to the same place with whatever it is that we're doing. We're wanting more joy, more peace, more love, less suffering. We want things to be happier for us in our life and everybody wants that. Now the thing with leadership is, is that we understand that we're headed to the same place but our road, our path is going to be unique. And in order to connect with somebody in a leadership fashion and in an effective way, we have to understand what that path is for every single person that we're leading. And in order to do that, we communicate with them and we talk with them and we get to know them and understand what their path to that success is too. So when you understand what that path of success is for them, you're able to take their success and connect it with the success that you're creating as the leader. So now you see the effectiveness of the leadership. Somebody else's success is tied directly to the success that you're achieving as a leader. And again, first you must know what that success is and then you must understand the success for the person the success path for the person or people, the group, not or, and all the people in that group and connect those things. And when you connect those things, that's when you remove, this is why leadership is so powerful. That's when you remove you doing everything on your own. You're only physically going to be so good. You can do so much physically on your own. You're only physically going to be able to accomplish so much on your own. We weren't meant to work that way. We were meant to come together to commune. We were meant to come together and work together and join together because that's how we really accomplish very big things out in the world. But in order to do that, we have to understand the energy that we're conveying to one another. And I want to use an example uh, when, when we do this because uh, just an example for our kids. You know, we think that what we want to do is that we want to take our kids and we want to save them from pain. And we do that by deciding for them. We're going to tell them what to do. So we don't want them to experience the pain that we've experienced. So we say, I'm going to take this and I'm going to decide for you and you're just going to do what I say. Now, in any capacity, whether you be an employer or whatever, when you're leading, it doesn't work because it's very short-sighted. A person has to be able to go from the point of being able to be led and directed to a point that they're developed, that they now are able to do that on their own. And in the case with our children, if you just play that out a little bit further, it doesn't make sense that I'm going to decide for my child so that I save them from pain. What you're creating in your child is somebody that's going to need you 24-7 to make their decisions. 
You have to ask yourself, would I rather turn a child out into the world as they grow into adulthood that is completely reliant on me, that's going to be calling me for every decision that they make in their life? Or do I want to turn a child out into the world that's capable of their own account, that can make their own decisions? You see, those two things, right? There's, there, let me say this. There's two things that you get from that. By being short-sighted and saying, I'm going to make the decision for you, I'm going to save you from pain, makes your child completely reliant upon you. Or, as some parents do, they say, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore for you, but they've not taught their child, they've not walked them through that and developed them through the process of making that decision on their own. They say, I'm not going to do it for you anymore, and then they just drop the child off. Well, that child is still in need of somebody to make those decisions for them. And that's a pretty precarious position because there's plenty of people out there that would stand up and make that decision for the child and then just begin directing that child's life. The child has no ability to control their own life, to control their own destiny. So we have to get in a line with what it is that they want, share our experiences, connect with that, and then allow them at some point after directing them for a while to step back and say, I'm going to allow you to make these decisions now. And remember, saving people from pain is not the answer. You've learned more from your mistakes than you've learned from your successes. We learn so much from that pain of having a failure, making a mistake, whatever. Why would we deny somebody else that? And the same is true if you're an employer or if you're a leader in, as we said, in, as I said, in the community, this is what real leadership is. It's a conveyance of a vibration and then going from a state of directing somebody to then allowing them to develop on their own. And all we do as a leader is we find what they're strong at and we continue to bring that out so that they can use that and understand that and recognize that within themselves. When you're able to do that, you're able to turn children out into the world that are self-sufficient. They can make their own decisions. When you're able to do that as an employer, you're able to have employees who run seamlessly and your phone is not ringing off of the hook. This is the true thing, the true nature behind being an exceptional leader. An exceptional leader doesn't have people following them because they have to. They have people following them because they want to. Matt here with Mind Move Manifest, and this is just a little deeper look into uh, leadership and how you can take leadership in any role that you're in and, and change it so that it serves you and you become a phenomenal leader.